Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here on Ravenport. We are going to carry straight on from where we left off in the last episode, so let's get to it. Maybe not go down over that hill quite so much in future. Not that I should need to, we, we shouldn't have any issues with that in future. Right, I'll bring you back round and... We go up alongside you, right to there, and then we will engage the cruise control, and we will go along exactly the same speed as what the forager is going. I'm actually going a wee bit faster than what the forager is going, so let's slow that down a bit, apply the brake. There. Right, perfect. Absolutely spot on perfect, and look at this, we haven't even gotten halfway full on the trailers yet. I'm really loving this trailer mod, right? The, the extra capacity on it really, really does make a glorious difference. I know that we're on, we are on like 45%. I don't think the visual on the trailer actually fills up quite as much as it does with any of the others. Um, I can't remember what the overall fill level is on the trailer. Is it 85,000? Can't be 85,000 because we're on 48% already. Oh, it, it is. It is 85,000. Um, I'll bring this one out like that. I know that we've got that one little patch. Okay, so we've got one tiny little triangle there that we're going to have to concern ourselves with. Uh, you should do a very neat, tidy, and clean finish on this turn. There should be no issues on this one. It's going to be nice and easy, for at least for the forager. For us... It's not going to be quite so simple, I wouldn't have thought, because it is a bit rough round here. We can bring it round this way. I'll come up there. It's, it's this bit right here on the end. It is a little bit uneven, and we haven't... Obviously, we've not bothered doing any work down here. We're trying to level it. We didn't need to, or at least... No, I didn't think that we needed to, so we didn't bother with it. And we bring you back up. So now, you, if you see, we're, we're just filling up the very back end of that trailer there. Just catching in the very last of it. It'll stop in a second. There we go. And we switch to the next trailer. So the front one is now completely full. We can start working on filling up this back trailer. And then once that one's done, we get to go and empty. But look how much of this field we have already done. We've gotten right down to the end of the triangle piece. And... We're now sort of working up across and we're going to... This pass here, and then we get another one, and we've then sort of moved on to these bits here. We'll be doing a full line from there all the way back through, and that's, that's actually like a, a really significant distance to go for each single pass from up there all the way back. It gets The, the runs get a little bit shorter until you get up to there, and then it should sort of lengthen out again but I think that's going to it's going to work nice it, it is slow though isn't it I do think that maybe we will speed this up thinking that might be a good idea we go we will we we'll keep playing with this we, we keep doing it we haven't even filled these two trailers yet and these jobs I, I like to do the job properly we will go all the way through and we we'll do the job for a bit and then we, we can see about changing things round once we've spent a bit of time just doing the first bit. Right, you're stopping because you're being difficult. You don't need to see the trailer to be able to turn, do you? Right, you absolutely do not need to be able to point stuff into the trailer in order to be able to turn yourself round. There's no need for this. You're just being difficult. And it's going to continue being difficult. And now I'm stuck. What exactly am I stuck on? An invisible bit of ground that doesn't really exist. All right, you're gonna you're gonna turn now. Now he's gonna turn. Right. We let that one do his turning around. At least he did get all the way up here and turn properly. You know, I'm I'm impressed it hasn't left a giant triangle. That was kind of what I was thinking was going to be happening. Actually, was we we're going to leave a huge, great big triangle behind. So we'll now come up alongside it, run down here, there, like that, and we'll have to get a little ways ahead of it this time, and we'll go to about here, like that, 
We're actually going a little bit too fast for it. So we'll slow down and let him catch up a bit. Uh, about there. So as I understand it, this is quite a realistic way of doing things over in the States. You guys do frequently use trucks out in the field towing huge great big trailers alongside your forage wagons your, your forage wagon, alongside your foragers um in order to be able to do your harvest and this is something i've never ever seen in the uk i mean yes you know i've seen tractors of various types and sizes i've seen all kinds of different trailers um of different types and sizes being used I've seen forage wagons of all kinds being used, but I've never seen a lorry pulling the trailer out in the field here in the UK. I'm sure it is done in the odd place, but it's it's a, it would be a fairly uncommon sight. There goes the train again. Never stops that one. Never seems to have anything loaded on board either. I think that would be the next step for the realism with the train, is when you see it going past, is actually loaded up with something got goods on board so you see it go past a load of logs and then you see it come by another time it's got no logs on it at all it's maybe got um you, you can see that it's loaded with grain or it's got pallets strapped down i mean yes you would have to have the animation somewhere it's getting loaded and unload i mean it doesn't have to be anything particularly complicated we know that but um it would still be very cool wouldn't it I, I would I, I would genuinely love to see that the the train getting different loads every every time you see the train go around the map um it's got a different load on board and so you've got this visual of a load of logs on it and the next time it goes through it's got some machinery and it's stopped off at the dealership and it's, it's delivered like a, a load of machinery to the dealership that'd be absolutely brilliant i'd love to see that happening it would thus just the, the fact of the train itself going around the map and also the cars, it, it kind of like brings the map to life, doesn't it? It, it? it gives it a little bit of life that the map doesn't otherwise have, you know, when, you, when you've got all these things moving around like that. If you were to have it moving around with loads on the train, that's, that's like an extra dimension it is bringing to it, isn't it? There's a whole extra level that it's bringing to it that is highly entertaining. And, well, I say highly entertaining. I'm, I suppose I'm using those words um, rather fast and loose there. Um, it's, I, I, it would just give an overall feeling of completion to the map in general. We are just about full. 170,000 litres right here on our truck. We are now done. Takes quite a bit to fill that up. We've got quite a bit of our field done on this. And now we need to go and empty 170,000 litres. I'm curious if we're going to get all of this field into one load on the um, on the biogas plant. Into one, one clamp at the biogas plant. Is it all going to go into one clamp? I think it will. Because, you know, we've already gone and put uh, 130, 175. We've already put 175,000 litres over there with the three other trailer loads. And it's barely made a scratch on the surface, has it? Like, it's, it's barely made any difference to anything over there whatsoever. So, you know, the, the, considering how much we covered, how much land we covered with these two trailers, we've got about the same on these two as we managed to get off of three of the 45,000 litre trailers. And... I don't think it's going to make a huge amount of difference. So let's see. I said 175,000. Was my maths correct? 135,000. No, my maths was not correct. 45 and 45. Why did I say that? What was I thinking? I said 175. I was thinking it came to 130,000. Why would I think that it came to 130,000? I don't actually know. Would be the long and the, the, the long and the short answer on that is I'm not quite sure why I thought that it was that particular number, but I did. I'm also stuck, completely stuck. So let's let's stop emptying it out because it's also going to get stuck on that. This is where we get into trouble with this, right? This this is where you get really get into trouble because. Because I got stuck slightly, only a little tiny bit, I now can't move at all. Because of that 
silage right there. That's, that's uh, pushed it right into the, the wrong place. So what I need to do instead is I'll have to do that. Unload that one. And this trailer is actually getting stuck on the top of the silage. And that's what happens, unfortunately, is the silage actually builds right up in a, a big sort of clump that doesn't it's, it's not particularly realistic it gives it a really sharp edge on the, the bottom the underside of the silage and then you can't actually move it and I mean once you if you go over it a few times it does flatten it out a bit and you are able to do something here so you can see here I'm already flattening the top of that down a bit and it's starting to make a little bit of a difference I'm hoping that I'll be able to get that trailer onto my existing trailer. Doesn't look like it at the moment. And I'm going to need to roll that out a lot more. We're going to we're going to need our big bud over here to be able to pull it out again. Or I could just try shunting it over there. Maybe I can do it like that. Let's first we'll, we'll empty this one out first. Let's get this one emptied out first. I run up along here and I'll try and do this a little bit more smoothly than I did just now. Like that. There. And then does it, does it auto close down? Yes, it does. It's auto closing. So now that that one's closing down, I will then back it over this way. And we'll go up along. This, this is the bit that's going to make it really tricky. Like in the field, it's a bit awkward doing the, the turning around. But it's not the end of the world. Um, in here, this is this this really does start to make it a lot more difficult. So we want to back that one round there, and yes, I'm able to hook you on. Then I can bring you round like this, and I want to go G so that I'm on the back trailer like that, and then I'll start unloading it here like that there we go as long as you're on the back trailer the back trailer will empty out just fine we won't have any issues with that one i can just run that one up like that keep it going nice and steady i want to like i want to leave a layer across the bottom i don't want to go so far that i'm i've gone too far up this end of the pit because that's just going to cause me problems there we go right and that will start closing itself automatically so we've got 305,000 liters of silage in there already we'll go and do one more load at least with both trailers because i mean overall i think this was reasonably successful we get one more load of this done and then we might have to stop and just take stock of how long we've got left how much of the field we've done and how long we think it's going to take us to be able to complete it it might be a better idea if we seriously consider and there's the train let's see if we can beat the train this time well sort of I sort of beat the train mainly because I crashed the, the, the truck maybe I shouldn't have done that I'm, I'm not sure that that was entirely in our best interest doing it like that now we've got the the hired help over here he sat in the forager it's been ticking down the money. Now, we know that it's going to do that. But if I get this, I get I get told this um, quite frequently in the time-lapse series as well. If, if I do something like this in the time-lapse, I get a load of people coming on and saying, oh, you, you, you're such a noob, you've done that all wrong, you left him going with the, the hired help, it's costing you a fortune, you should have switched it off, and that's how you're supposed to do it. Right, okay, my question to you, anybody, I don't imagine that anybody that... Um, said that watches this series um it tends to be people that just watch the time lapse series so my question though if anybody is watching is in real life how many people do you know will go and drive a forager for a day you know a contractor but when you leave the field as soon as you as soon as you leave him while he's waiting for the next trailer does he go off the clock does he stop charging you for being there? Or does he charge you the whole time that he's there? Alright, it's, it's one or the other. And you can, you yes, you could get two trailers and you could swap them over. But that's like, and you could have him towing his own trailer. But honestly, that's 
it takes so long to like chop and change the trailers and then and keep sort of um jumping between the two that by the time you've actually done that by the time you've actually finished with it and you've got your um uh your, your trailers swapped over and both machines running off again right you, you add up all of that time it's faster just to not bother with it especially if you've, you i mean if you're a long way from the clamp then yes it might actually be worth it because by the time you get back to the field he's gone and filled up the next trailer but if you're not a very like if, you, if you're close to the clamp like i am in that time lapse series then no it, it, it doesn't really uh, that doesn't fly right I'm going to bring you up around here. It's going to be interesting. If we mess up our turn here and we have the trailers do something strange to us, we're going to be off down the side of that cliff. And whilst we have taken a journey down the side of the cliff before now, it's not really something I want to add to my to-do list. And here we go with the really long runs. Now we're talking. This is the, this is the really long runs now. We, we've got these up here and then there's... It'll go to slightly even longer once we got through the next kind of dip wiggle bit in the field. We're taking out um, the tail end of field 17. That's actually, we'd have done the bulk of it by then, right? You look at you look at this field now. We have got acres and acres of this stuff to do, but it's going to be quite quick, right? The, the turning time is slow, so we're already halfway full on the first trailer. 85,000 liters per trailer. And we're up to 41, coming up 42,000 litres on the first trailer already. So we're 25% full. And all we've done is like a little bit of a run up through there. And then a little bit of a run down. And that's it. We haven't actually done that much. This is why I'm thinking Stevie. Stevie's, Stevie's mods might be the ones. We will go and have a look. I'm... I'm I don't remember if he'd done a crone one. I'm pretty sure he... I know he's done the New Holland one. But this crone one here where you... Oh, no, actually, this one... I was thinking this is a mod one. But no, it's not, is it? This one isn't a modded one. The modded one is the small... That's the modded one there, the 580. And that's a smaller one. He's done this one. He, he has modded this one. And he's actually made it bigger and more powerful again. I don't think I've got it active on this map, though. Uh, no, I don't. Right. I will have to do that ready for next week... I will get Stevie's mods enabled on here, or get more of them. I'd, I've got some of them enabled, but I will get more of them enabled, and then we can hopefully get a whole load more of it going. Right, now, what are you going to do? How daft are you going to be? You're gonna, you're gonna, I don't know why it does that. It always leaves one tiny, tiny, tiny little bit, and then like disappears off like it's, it's enough there that you can see it so it's enough there to frustrate you and annoy you because it's been left by itself in the field but it's not enough to actually do anything with now it's coming up and it's turning round. and is it going to stop in the crop there and start with a big triangle left behind or is it going to back all the way out again so obviously it doesn't I do really like that the hired help doesn't go and back out onto the tracks. Uh, that's really good. But, yeah, it, it has left a fair bit behind, isn't it? There's, there is a lot of silage that's left behind just there. Right. On we go again. I suppose it's not that much. In the grand scheme of things, you know, when, you, when you think about just how much silage we're getting off of this field, it's not actually that much, is it? I'm thinking once we've done this one load, the next thing we will do is we will activate our big bud system and we will go and compact the silage clamp down. I would very much like to do that. Bring you, you know what I haven't done? I haven't done this. Right, this is fine. I can do this. This, this bit is absolutely really, really easy. But it would be when it's doing the next trailer because you can't see into the trailer at all. You've got no... You, you can't see anything at all into the... How have we got mud inside the cab? Honestly. Yeah, I don't really like this. This, this isn't a view that I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of. And we're approaching... 50, there we go. Right, 50%. It's filled the first trailer. And it filled it surprisingly quickly. So we'll come up to there and we'll go like that. So now if you look in... 
Right? I can't see it at all. I can't even see it in my mirrors at the moment. This is a little bit more difficult. I mean, yeah, you'd have to rely on the radio a lot more, I suppose. And maybe just pull in a little... If I was to be in a little bit closer like that, maybe I could see a bit better then. Can I see it now? I could just, I could just make it out in my mirror. I would obviously adjust my mirror. I would have... The, the window would be open... And I would have adjusted my mirror ever so slightly just to make sure that I could see that beast of a forager working up and down the field. Because, you know, not being able to see it, that's, that's not really a good thing when you, you're working on something like this. It's helpful to be able to see where that forager is and what it's doing. I can imagine it would be helpful for the forager as well because you're not going to accidentally swing in front of him or drive away from him or anything else that would be idiotic and daft. Um, now, what are you going to do? You're going to be idiotic and daft? No, he's actually going to turn round. He's going to do so sensibly for a change. Just just for something different. He's going to probably try and back into me now. Just to prove me wrong. I'm going to go over this way. And we're going to swing right up like that. And then start swinging in round. And you, you, can't, you just can't turn too sharp because it... Like, the, the trailers catch each other, and then it causes all sorts of problems, doesn't it? You really wouldn't be doing this, would you? Not not in the field. This is definitely not something that you would do in the field with the, the whole road train situation. It would just be one trailer at a time. You would have one truck with one trailer, and then the next truck would come along, and that would also have a single trailer on it. Not this whole road train malarkey that we've got going here. I mean, road trains are fun. Something that I really like about Farming Simulator 19 is the ability to have a road train. But let's be honest, it's not a particularly realistic thing at times. Yes, driving along the road with a road train. Big loads on and, and hauling massive amounts of stuff up and down the countryside. That is quite realistic in certain places in the world. Seeing like this, this setup that we got right here. This is not something you would ever see in the UK, right? You would not find that driving along a road. Now, if you were living in Australia, this might be a much more common sight. I know that road trains in Australia are fairly frequent. Um, in the US, I'm not sure about this. I don't know if that would actually be a legal configuration or if you'd have to have what um, what you call the B-double, where the, the back tray it doesn't have a dolly. Um, it doesn't have that extra joint as a dolly. The, the, um, the hitch for the back trailer is actually on the back of the front trailer. So the two are designed to go together. I've used B-doubles in FS17. Um, it was a mod for B-doubles. And so that, that was a thing in FS17. But that's a little bit different to this because obviously you've got one less joint on it. And I don't know if the number of um, attachers is actually anything to do with the legal requirements or not. Um, some places I think it is and some places I don't think it makes any difference whatsoever. So you've got like some places that will allow you to have a certain number of um, pivot points on your machine... As, uh, on your, your road train as you're going up or pivot points for the distance. Other places it's just governed by length and um, and in other places it's governed by the number of axles and I don't know, there's, it seems to be that every single, as many places as you've got in the world, there are that many reg rules and regulations for each spot in the world. Like one place it's perfectly legal to do one thing and then another place you're not allowed to whatsoever. Uh, I believe in the US it is legal for two drivers to work a um, one lorry with a sleeper cab. Uh, or it's, it used to be at least. Um, I don't know if it is any longer, but it's, uh, it did used to be legal for two drivers to work one sleeper cab. So one driver could sleep whilst the other one drove up the road. Whether this is legal anymore, I don't know. Um, it's definitely not legal in the UK. You're not allowed to have two drivers running the same lorry in the UK. Uh, if the driver is sleeping or resting, the lorry must be parked up. You're not allowed to have two drivers working shifts, so one sleeps while the other drives, and that keeps the lorry moving 24-7. Um, 
and the drivers are still getting their appropriate uh, rest breaks, the ones that they're supposed to have. We're struggling. We're really struggling to get up this hill. Of that, oh yes, of course. I remember now when when we were planting this field. Look, see, there's some little dips in the field, and that was just enough to put that truck out because of the weight of silage that we've got on this thing at the moment. There's like Jen is really struggling to get up this hill. I know that there is quite. A, we have got quite a bit of silage in here, but it, it's really struggling with it. That's actually quite cool. I like, I, I actually really like the fact that it's struggling with it. I think this is really good. Bring you up there. There we go. We're just about, we're, there we go. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. Uh, 170. Perfect. Right. Let's get going. He says. I'm not going to move at all now, am I? Right. If I can get going along this way. That's better. Now we're heading downhill. That's going to work a lot better. We've done a good chunk of the field, but we've definitely, we haven't even reached halfway yet. Let me just stop that one a minute. Look. So we, we've done a good chunk of it. All of this up here, plus we've done one little loop around. But we have got a fair bit to go, haven't we? Right, there, there is still a good slice to go. So I'm wondering how we're going to sell this silage. I will look at the old Stevie mods again and see if he's done a wheel loader with uh, increased capacity. I know that you can get capacities of um, slightly bigger than what we've got at the moment. But I'm thinking that we would probably want something with a 50,000 litre capacity on a wheel loader. Um, because otherwise we'd, it's just going to take too long to shovel the silage across. And I don't really want to do that. I don't want to be there for absolutely ages shoveling silage from the clamp into the pit in order to tip it out. As We're, we're going to be there forever. But if we've got one that's got like a, a capacity of 25,000 litres or 50,000 litres, 50,000 would be better. Especially if we're bringing this in like this is 170,000 litres right here. This is a lot of silage. We've got 300,000 in there already. So, yeah, I, I definitely think we want to be looking at something. Did you see how much that truck was pushed over onto his side as he went around that corner? Um, we definitely want to be looking at something in the region of, I would say, um, a 50,000 litre capacity. Because anything smaller than that is just going to take too long. Right, let's switch you to there. And we will stop that. And we'll go up here. And we will start. We'll empty this one out. We'll just run alongside like this there we get that tipped out there so we've got i mean the compaction on here we've done really well with compaction because the how heavy the truck is it you know compaction at the moment is not something we have to really worry about it it will be something that we'll have to concern ourselves with right it's going to be more of an issue but right now it, it, it's absolutely nothing Three hundred and ninety thousand. so we're approaching half a million liters of silage in this clamp and we've barely even done a layer across the bottom. Like, we, we've hardly done anything so far. Seriously, look at it. Like, there, there's practically nothing there so far. And we've... Let me just bring that back around there. We've got 390,000 litres of chaff. Add in another 85,000. We're going to be saying 400 and... Wait, what? 475,000. We've got just under a half a million litres of chaff in here. And we've barely even covered the bottom. Right? We, we, there's hardly anything in here at all. By o overall standards, like, we, we're just about empty on this clamp. So how much does this clamp take in total? Like, this, this place is huge. I know that it was a big investment. Half a million dollars it cost to buy this place. Which is a big investment, but 400... Yeah, and, and, and we've hardly done anything. Let's just leave you there a second. We'll run along this way. we we'll go and get the big bud. I mean, yeah, what, really what we'd want. To, to, to properly test... Well, there we go, folks. I'm afraid that's it. We've run out of time, which means that we need to head on home. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.